been living in Nashville for a few months and just having a frustrating time trying to find where I fit in and who I could relate to and how I could be part of the community there. And I had enough self-awareness to realize this wasn't 100% the case, but it really just would feel viscerally sometimes like people would act like your friend one day and then overnight just decide they didn't like you the next day and this was something that I had never really fallen for before as a musician and artist but Nashville really has this way of pulling you into the frustration and despair of trying to make it and being successful and it looking a certain way so even people who would never think of it that way and know better would have a harder time avoiding the temptation of going down that rabbit hole in Nashville because it's such a strong pool there. And it felt sometimes like the people who were able to succeed as musicians in Nashville were people who'd played music like that since they were little babies or gone to a fancy music school, just had some kind of resources that I didn't have. And I felt that maybe I'd been spreading myself too much over all these different disciplines and different art forms and fields of study instead of focusing solely on music. And I would have had to just focus on only that in order to succeed there. And just having all these ideas about why it maybe wasn't working and why it was too hard and looking younger is a really big thing in the music industry the entertainment industry and in some ways i had that little asset going for me but it wasn't even real because i actually was older than i looked a lot older than i looked and so even if i were to allow myself to benefit from having that asset, it was still alienating for me because it would be harder for me to relate to people who are actually in the same place in their life as me, in the same age group, if I allowed them to believe I was as young as I looked. And it just felt dishonest with anyone I was relating to, to allow them to believe something about me. And also, I felt that if people believed it for a while and then found out my real age, they'd think I was really immature and should be further along in my career as someone 10 to 15 years older than I looked. And there's all these social anxieties and concepts about who you should be by a certain age and everything. And also in terms of social anxiety and relating to other people, it seemed like if I could just get over my aversion to alcohol and drinking and partying, then I'd be able to bond with these people who all really liked to do that and that's how they related. And I ran into that same issue in New Orleans, just really not wanting to um, do that so much. Kind of kept me out of the community in a way because it's how people bond. And I just, in those months, spent a lot of time alone, studying on my own, meditating, praying a lot, doing spells, holding ceremonies for planetary deities and the fey folk, doing liminal magic, all of these things for especially trying to succeed as a musician, but also to find the true love that I mentioned in the song as well. and. I have that line, I'll pray I magically find the girl I left behind me. When you say that phrase, you're just praying you'll magically have this happen, it sounds like you're making fun of someone for believing this pointless, futile thing. You know, it's just gonna magically happen, you know, but at the same time, it was true. I was working with magic and prayer in order to try to have this happen and I feel that with those efforts along with the great changes in consciousness that came through the pandemic of COVID-19 
a lot of these things did come true that I was praying for. Um, I did reconnect with the person who doesn't fall for those social constructs and beliefs and assumptions about who you should be at a certain time in your life because, you know, getting your shit together is something that you begin over and over again as you search through your life through all of these paths and look for your passion and just as long as you have that passion you can have success at something but you're always starting over at something in your life and so that really helped me get over a lot of the um, just hypnotizing pull of you have to be this at this time and have to have had this and be this way. I got over a lot of that and I also did find a true love to be with and just felt more successful in my own unique path with my art and music. Um, but at the time that I came up with these lyrics, I posted them on social media just very vulnerably showing how I had been feeling and I think some people thought it was boring and annoying as most social media posts that have anything controversial in any way will result in but also there were people who came out of the woodwork and reached out to me because they related to it and I think it helped me get closer to some people and develop some more relationships. And I guess I was listening to Bob Wills a lot at that time. And so I would have been hearing the girl I left behind me and just realized my lyrics would fit over that song. And I realized that by the time I wrote the line about the girl I left behind me. So it all came together as fitting those lyrics over that really old tune. And I looked up that tune to make sure it wouldn't have Compre rights or something on it and it turned out that it's such an old fiddle tune that's been through so many different types of lyrics and versions over the years since at least the Elizabethan era there's documentation of that tune being played so it's a really ancient song that a lot of people have rewritten and I'm one of them.